name is Max Strong, and I'm the director here at the CWB Association. One of the great questions that I've been getting a lot lately is what is electron beam welding? Well, I'm gonna do a short video here to explain kind of how it works, the basics of it, what are the pros and cons, and if you're gonna see it in your shop anytime soon. All right, so right off the top, we need to understand what an electron is. An electron is a particle of energy that exists in everything. They're in every atom, they're a part of every structure of our universe from the sun to mosquitoes to ourselves to this board. Now, how do we work with those? Now, we can harness those electrons. We do it for a lot of things. In this format, what we're doing is that we're gonna have something called an electron beam gun. That's one of the components of an electron beam welder. Sounds pretty cool, it is. Now, this is a very oversimplification of that process, but in that electron beam gun, what it does is it gathers electrons and starts to compress them and speed them up. Okay, now during that process of compressing them and speed them up, speeding them up, they start to build kinetic energy. Now what's kinetic energy? Well, kinetic energy is energy plus speed. So if you have mass, which an electron has a tiny little bit of mass, and we start giving them speed, they start building energy, just like a basketball. If I throw a basketball down at the ground, I've given it kinetic energy by throwing it down. That kinetic energy gets rebounded back up to make it bounce to my hands. What this does is it takes the tiny little mass of the electron and speeds it up super high. That kinetic energy then, the electrons are shot out the end at a high velocity, and when they hit the plate, that kinetic energy is released as heat, forming a puddle. All right, so it's pretty basic in terms of what it does, is that it just lines up the electrons, speeds them up, and shoots them at a super fast speed, when they hit that wall or hit the material, they release that energy in terms of heat making the puddle. Now, what are the drawbacks of this? Well, right off the top, there can't be anything in the way of the path of that electron from here to here. Now, what could be in the way? Well, the atmosphere, anything. It's not like other welding processes where you put an inert gas there to keep the oxygen away. Even the inert gas would be a problem. So what we need to do for any electron beam welding is you have to have it in a complete vacuum. So all electron beam welding right now has to be done in a complete vacuum chamber or some type of a portable vacuum unit. So that means most electron beam welding done in the world right now, that is for nuclear, aerospace, or aeronauticals, any really high-end materials like titaniums, they're done in large vacuum chambers that actually host the machine, Weldments, the robots, everything is inside of a large vacuum chamber. Or some of the new processes of electron beam welding are actually built with small mini vacuum chambers that get welded onto the piece. But at the end of the day, you can't have any environment be around this. Once you get the weld going, you can weld a couple different ways, autogenously, which is the heat of the electron beams, heating the plate through that kinetic energy, or you can add filler in forms of powder or a filler rod like other weld processes to increase the weld. Now, because of its amazing ability to be so precise, I can have temperatures anywhere from 3,500 to 20,000 degrees Celsius. That's great for titanium or nickels or any of the crazy materials out there. And also because we're shooting things so small like electrons, I can have welds literally electrons wide. So you can have tiny, tiny precise welds. So you're looking at circuitry or possibly computer equipment. All right, so are you gonna see this in your shop anytime soon? I don't think so. This is a tougher sell. You know, you got a lot of equipment here. So you got an expensive machine that you gotta buy. Then you gotta have a vacuum chamber that you gotta set up. The power requirements for electron beam welding is quite high. And usually because of the precision and the preciseness of the work, you have either a robot or some type of CNC operated equipment to run this. I hope this makes sense and I hope it clarifies a little bit about how electron beam welding works. I know we hear these terms all the time and we just wanna know what they are as welders. Well, very simple, heat from kinetic energy in a vacuum. That's all it is, right? If you wanna find videos, please check them out. Companies like EWI have fantastic videos online about how they work and even awesome shots of them welding. If you have any questions for me about this or other welding processes, reach out anytime to Ask Max 75 on Instagram, or you can reach out to the CWD Association on any of our social media channels.